Oh! Oh. Hello, everyone. Excuse me. Sorry. Okay, well, I know it might not look like it, but I'm actually in India right now. And I have been, um, going to many of the ancient temples and searching for a story to include in the library, The Finer's Fireside Tales. And I think I might finally have found one. This here is the journal of one Baharta. And it was translated, um, into uh, English. And tonight, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story from, from his voice. So let us begin. And before I begin, this is one of those exaggerated stories, I believe, due to the... You'll see why here in a moment. But uh, let me just begin. <clears throat> My name is Bihata. I live in the village of Kalkamara. And, um... When I was growing up, my mother used to always tell me to never touch strangers, that I, I should always stay with my own kin. And growing up, that's what I came to believe. My mother wasn't perfect with us. She used to beat us quite a lot if we uh, disobeyed. But of course, back then, that's just simply how people handled things like that. But anyways, one day my mother gave me a pot of honey and told me to take it to my grandmother. So I, I put the big pot of honey on top of my head, and I headed down the uh, forest trail. Anyways, I was going with my friend Pandu, and the two of us were walking down the trail, and we were talking about girls and things, and eventually we came to a large river. And it must have rained the night before, because it was very deep, and the river was moving very fast. Anyways, um, at first uh, we weren't sure if we wanted to go across the river, but there was a trail of stones across, so finally we decided to risk it, and Pandu went first. He hopped across the stones and made it to the other side, and then I followed after him, and I was hopping across the stones when I heard my friend Pandu say, Bahata, look out! And I, I was just about to make my leap, so it was too late, and I landed right on top of the head of a crocodile. And the crocodile looked at me with, with the most evil eyes, and, and I fell down in the river, and the pot fell down in the water, and... And, and probably was dragged off into the stream. Well, anyways, I, I found myself being dragged down the river, and the crocodile was right behind me, and it was snapping its jaws. But somehow I, I must have managed to swim away from it. And I went down that river, and I don't know how long it was for. It, it felt like hours, but eventually I, I found myself on a stone, and I was, I was breathing heavily, and the sun was on my back, and I, I clambered up on top of it, and I, I, just, I just started breathing as as heavily as I could. And as I sat there, I heard a voice. Who? 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 Who's there? Who, who's on my home? And I looked down, and what, what should I, Well, I looked up, and what should I see but the eyes of a turtle staring straight at me? And the turtle was speaking, as if it were a human being. And I said, Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, ma'am. Is this your home? Yes, she said. Well, what are you doing here, little pink monkey? And I said, Oh, I was dragged downstream. A crocodile tried to bite me. Old mug almost got you, huh? She said. Well, don't you worry, little boy. My name is Jahira, and I am the goddess, I suppose you could say, of this river. I will take you to some monkey friends who should be able to help you. The monkeys are your relations, and, and maybe they can get you home safely. Well, I, I said, all right, ma'am. And so we went down the river. Anyways, I, I explained my whole story, and, and she listened carefully. Oh, yes, yes, Mug can be quite a mean crocodile. And I asked her, Ma'am, if you don't mind me asking, how is it that a creature like you can exist, an animal that can talk and think just like a human being? And she said, Well, I forget the whole story, but I believe it goes something like this. You see, long ago... God and the angels came down from the heavens, and, yes, yes, I believe God gave us the power of voice. He gave us the ability to speak and think like a human being. And I, I listened, and I said, oh, that's incredible. And um, I said, I just didn't believe such things like you could exist. And she said, oh, all sorts of things exist in this world, boy. You see, there is this creature that tries to make things make sense in this universe tries to make things fall into order. But then there is this other being. 
this being of nonsense who breaks all of the rules, he frees this universe from its restrictions. But I, I didn't really understand what the turtle was talking about. But anyways, eventually we came to these large trees, and I, I looked up, and the turtle said, All right, let me just um, call out for my friend Makara. And she began to cry, And then suddenly a bunch of monkeys came down, and I think they were macaw monkeys, and, and I, I said, Please, monkeys, could you get me home? Please, I, I miss my family, and I'm, I'm so scared, and, and I just, I need, I need help. And the monkeys looked down and said, Oh, well, sure, we can get you home. And uh, one of them looked at the turtle, Hello there, goddess, how are you doing? And the, the turtle said, Oh, very good, monkeys. Please help this poor little fellow home. He, he's rather lost. And so they said, Well, doesn't take long when you get off the trail to get back on it. Come on up with us. And they grabbed me with their strong arms and they, they carried me up into the trees. And so we all began winning, going across all through the trees. We, we were swinging from vine to vine. And I was taken aback by all the adventure of it. I felt like I was at home. And all my tears, all, all my sadness were gone all of a sudden. And I just felt happy and free. <sighs> Sorry. But it was, it was an incredible experience, you have to understand. Well, anyways, we were going, but the monkeys were rather faster than me. And, and soon enough, they were at least a mile away. And they were so into the climbing and all that that they forgot about me. And I, I called out, Makaras! Makaras! But they, they didn't hear me. Anyways, as I was swinging, I grabbed hold to this one vine, and I suddenly realized how slippery and slimy it was, and I found myself falling down onto the ground, and I looked up, and I realized I was staring into the face of a snake. And the snake was looking at me, and it was hissing, and oh, I, was, I was terrified. It began to go all around my body, and it, it had me strangled. And the snake said, I am Nag. How are you, my little boy? And I, I was frightened. I, I, I didn't know what to do. And I said, let go of me. This isn't very mannerly. And the snake said, I do not care about manners. I want your blood. I see you I mean, human beings running around with your guns and your knives, always wanting to cut us little snakes. Oh, yes, I see you so tricky. But the little rat is caught. And now I'll have my lunch. And I, I was scared, but I realized that in my belt there was a knife that I had rather forgotten about. So I, I was able to push down in, and I grabbed hold of the knife, and I cut the snake in half. And the snake began to, to writher around, and, and it acted as if it had its own head cut off, and it said, Sasa, death. And I, I ran away, and I watched as the snake died, and it said, Ah, the mouse has killed the cat. I am going, going somewhere far off. The world is gone from me. No meal today. But our world will take over theirs. We animals, we will be the new age. Now, I don't know what this means, and I never have. I remember it still because it was so vivid. And there is something about the snake's voice that told me that there was much in this that it said, but before I had a chance it was dead, lying there, and I was now lost completely. I had no monkeys, I had no turtles, I had no one that could help me. And anyways, as I was standing there, I, I suddenly heard a noise, and all at once the trees began to fall apart, fall down on the ground, and then I saw this huge bear come out of the forest, and it let out a loud growl. <laughs> Well, I was frightened. I didn't know if this was a talking bear, whether it was friendly or anything. And the bear came right up at me, and it, it looked like it was about to eat me. And I said, listen, listen, I, I'm a friend. Look, I, I don't know if you can talk or not, but I need to get home to Kalkamara village. And the bear looked at me, and it, it seemed confused for a moment, and, and then it seemed to be aware of who it was, and it said, oh, Yes, yes, I, I'd rather forgotten. Yes, I, I know who you are. From Kalkamara village, you say? Well, um, come with me, come with me, quick. We better get out of here, there are many dangerous beasts in this forest. So I, I, I went with the bear, and we came to this large cave, and the bear sat me down, and 
He gave me a whole bunch of fruit, which I, I began to eat, and I told him my whole story of how I, I had gotten lost on the river, and how I had almost drowned, and how I was saved by the turtle, and then captured by the monkeys, and, and almost eaten by the snake. And the bear listened intently, and the bear said, I have not had a human being in my cave for many a long year. I suppose I should tell you my story. You see, a long time ago, I was a human being, just like you and a rather troublesome one at that. I used to get in all sorts of mischief. And one day I was yelling at this little girl, saying she looked like a bird with her long nose, when a witch heard me. And the witch didn't like that I was making fun of this little girl, and thought it was rather cruel, so she decided to teach me a lesson. She cast a spell on me and turned me into a bear, and said that unless I could learn manners, I could not... Uh, be a part of this tribe any more, and I would remain a bear for the rest of my life. Well, anyways, I tried to make friends with the with all the other tribesmen, but they all saw me as a bear, and they took their spears, and they, they took their arrows, and they, they made me flee from the old village, Kalakamara. Well, I, I went into this cave, and for many years I have almost forgotten about my past as a human being. But then you came along. Well, I said... Um, the turtle and the monkeys were very kind to me, and they, they did a good for me and expected nothing in return. So if there's anything that I can do for you, I will do so, and I won't expect anything in turn for it. And the bear said, No, my child. Wait, perhaps there is something you can do for me. The witch told me that if I were to do a good act for another human being, she would revert me back to my human form. If there's anything I can do for you, I would greatly appreciate it. So I, I said, well, there is one thing. I had a pot of honey on my head, and I was supposed to deliver it to my grandmother. But I lost it when Mug tried to eat me. So I, I, I was wondering if, if you could help me, if you could get me some honey for my grandmother. And the bear said, hmm, well, I think I could do that. So anyways, we went off, and we came to a, a large tree, and the bear said, all right, you see that hive up there? And I said, uh, yes, make a fire. It should get the uh, bees out of there. And so I did, I did just as the bear said. I, I made a fire and the, and the smoke went all up and I, I looked up and I, I saw that the bees were all falling out and they were fast asleep. And I took the whole um, hive and the bear led me to the river. Here, he said, pots come down from this river all the time. I suppose people lose them or something like that. Anyways, why don't you grab hold of one and fill the pot with honey? A and I did so. And so I, I had a pot of honey for my grandmother. And the bear said, Well, come on. There won't be any creature that will want to mess with a bear. I'll, I'll take you back home. A and so the bear took me back home, and, and we came to Kalakamara village. And the bear said, I, I want to thank you for helping me. And I said, Oh, oh, there's no problem, Mr. Bear. I, I was happy to help. My name is Basu, it said. And then to my surprise, what should I see but that the bear took off its coat, for that was all it was, a bear skin coat all around the person's body and revealed himself to be a man. And the man, he looked at me, a basu, I suppose you could say, and he said, Thank you, my boy. I have been in that bear's body for thirteen years now, and you have saved me. I'll always remember the power of a friend. And I said, I will too, and I assure you I'll, I'll bring flatbread and water to you out here in, in the wilderness when, whenever you need it. And the bear said, Thank you, my boy. And we grabbed each other's hands, one man to another, and we parted as friends. And so I, I guess I don't really know exactly what the moral of the story is, but I do know one thing, that if we're going to make it through this world, we're going to have to do it together. And, um, now that I'm out of character, that is all for tonight. As always, um, sweet dreams and good night. I think I might do a little bit of kayaking now. So long.